Have you noticed sometimes how you are not in control of your own body? The browser is open with materials to study for the upcoming test and a few minutes later a video is playing of Mr. Beast gifting a house to a stranger. In this video I am going to reveal why it's so hard to resist the algorithm and distractions, what the strategy is to set free and how not to fail and have to start over. For my computer science degree in first year of university I had to learn subjects like calculus. I came from a foreign language school that doesn't cover harder math subjects so you wouldn't be surprised if I told you I passed the exams for only 2 of my 10 subjects and I had to repeat the year. I was even thinking of dropping out and giving up on my dream. It's not that the algorithm is too hard to resist but life sometimes increases the difficult too quickly. When I try to study, negative emotions would come up because I am behind and I can't move forward because I can't solve the problem. This is where the algorithm comes in. It is a coping mechanism where you numb yourself from reality and for a moment you forget about all the problems. If I had this video when I was 18, my life would have been very different from today. The solution is to fix your life and I have a strategy that I have been improving for years after trying many solutions online. For me dopamine detox didn't work, nor did hiding the phone in another room. This will not solve the main problem. I figured this out when I was building a website for a tech bootcamp, an intensive training program to be job ready as a software engineer. For a week I was in the zone. This is my favorite thing to do, to build interesting programming projects. I was so in the zone that for 7 days that's all I was doing. From waking up to going to bed. Finally when I sent the project they were so surprised by how much I achieved in so little time with new technologies that they couldn't believe I did it on my own. Later I got the most points out of everyone in the bootcamp for the project. What caught my attention was that when I would usually open up YouTube to watch a video or some other distraction. Now all of the sudden I am not interested. In those 7 days the algorithm was powerless. It's because I had a more interesting alternative to it. I was having much more enjoyable time creating the project than any video or funny meme could offer me. The strategy is quite simple to understand. It's time to achieve your goal you have been avoiding because most likely it's really hard to achieve. Maybe it has even been promoted from a goal to an impossible to reach dream. My guitar is covered in dust. I haven't learned Japanese and in my first year of university I was thinking of dropping out. I know how disappointing it is when we have to give up. Here is how to not give up and achieve your goal. The most important thing to realize is that a goal is a series of actions. What is the most recent goal you have achieved? If you can remember and look back to when you started, you will notice that all you did was a series of actions. And for the goals we have given up, the problem is we can't translate them into a series of actions. Like finding a job. What does that mean? What is step 1? For many people it's different. And when we can't figure out what we have to do, that's when the algorithm is the hardest to resist. The solution is a mind-blowing realization I had this week. Goals are of different types. If you for example decide today to learn how to do a backflip and after a month you still haven't learned it, then the goal of learning a backflip for you is a yearly goal. It's a goal that will take months. You cannot break down a yearly goal into a set of actions. You break it down into monthly goals that take weeks to accomplish. And break down those goals until you reach daily goals that take hours to accomplish. Then a goal for a day that takes hours can be broken down into a series of actions. Each action should be less than an hour. The caveat is that breaking down a daily goal into actions takes trial and error. When it's something new and outside of our comfort zone we have to try different things and see what works and what doesn't. But the important lesson was that the goal we should be breaking down into series of actions should be a daily goal. But what if I have the urge to check my phone or see what's new on reddit, you may ask me. Here is a tip on how to survive when the bad habits are the strongest. When you have an urge to check the phone, you need to ride the urge like a surfer rides the wave. 
It will pass, especially if you continue focusing on what you are working on. After some time you will remember, oh yeah, I was struggling with this strong urge and now it's gone. This most likely will not work in the beginning. So here is another tip. When the urge for checking the phone comes up, it will be too strong. So train this technique on simpler battles when you are scrolling shorts. Instead of continuing from the 10th to the 11th, write the small urge to continue to the next short and switch to something else. It doesn't have to be something productive. Gathering a lot of small wins like that creates the needed confidence for the fight with the urge of checking the phone. Clicking the like button will increase the chances I make more videos like this. You really liked the previous video topic. That's why this week's topic is a continuation. Do you remember how I told you I was so in the zone when making the project that the company didn't believe I made it on my own? Here is how to get in the zone and achieve more than you thought is possible. When you have a set of actions to do and you start focusing entirely on the first one and you complete it, then focus entirely on the next one and complete it, then the next one. If you continue doing this, you will enter the zone. That's how I do it and it has happened to me more than once. There is a big problem with this strategy. It works too well. It's probably okay to be working so much for a week or two. But more than that will lead to burnout. If you want to use it and not fall back to how you started, you need to set healthy boundaries, but still maintain the same or even better results. I will share with you a strategy for maintaining the same results. For my channel, I have to make a video every week. It's easy to think of boundaries of when work is allowed and when it's time to relax. But the problem is that by the end of the week, the video is still not ready. I could just upload it, but I'm not satisfied with the quality. So for my last video, I needed two weeks to make it, which is not acceptable. I need to find a way to have the same result for a week without crossing my boundaries. This video contains years of knowledge, trial and error on my site. Subscribing to the channel will lead to even better videos. Here is another mind-blowing solution to the problem. Remember how goals are different types. So there are goals for the week that take days to accomplish. In order to squish two weeks worth of work into one week but still maintain healthy boundaries, what you have to experiment with is the proportions of the goals with the same type. Trial and error of the proportions of the goals with the same type and which ones should stay and which one should not is how I optimize. And after all of that, if you are still not satisfied with the results, just leave it like that. Let it fail and learn from the mistakes. It's better to learn from failure than to be in an infinite loop of improvement and in the end have disappointing results. All of this will not work if you have an action to wake up early and when it's time to wake up, you give up. Watch this video next to see how three successful people deal with failure and desperation.